Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, thought this would be a little bit easier if I redo some of the talking um, on this video because I've got a heater in the garage and it's just noisy. You'll see that later for uh, part of the video and how loud and annoying it is. The mic keeps picking it up. Uh, but today I wanted to show you replacement of a fuel pump on a F-250 uh, Ford turbo diesel. Now it's a 6.0 and this will work for um, late 04s to 2008, I believe. So, it's very simple process. Um, and you'll see in the video, basically there's three bolts that hold this pump on the side of the frame rail underneath. And you need some fuel disconnect tools. And I'll show you those in the video. They've got uh, several different sizes of those that you can buy. And most places will have them. Um, I bought mine at Harbor Freight and they're great tools there's no problems with them there and they're cheap um, so something i wanted to hit on with issues with your fuel pump um, if you're trying to diagnose um, if you're having a fuel pump issue or what the situation may be um, i started having some issues had a little bit of miss in my motor i also had uh, i'd taken off real hard playing with the new tunes on my truck and thought that something wasn't right because the transmission went completely haywire. Uh, RPMs were going up and down, um, and it just felt horrible. Engine was shaking. Sound like a catastrophic transmission about ready to explode. Uh, one of those, you know, catastrophic failure. It ended up being the fuel pump. Uh, nothing was wrong with the transmission. Something you never smelled burnt transmission uh, fluid. You know that smell you get when the clutches roast. Uh, never got that, and that kept going, what, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, a lot of people, you know, dirt, work on their own vehicles, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's when you smell that smell, um, but when you don't, and you've had this issue, you're going, what, what's going on? Uh, so I thought it was the new tunes. They will mess with transmission parameters. Um, I've had some bad tunes that did not go well with my transmission and it actually did have the wonderful burnt smell from before so what I actually had done was change the filter uh, both filters in my truck you have the one on the fuel pump uh, that's inside of it and you have one underneath the hood next to the oil filter on the 6.0 turbo diesels so I had done my normal maintenance on that mine is extremely particular always has been that I have to leave the bowl underneath the hood open um, I have to turn the key on and prime it. I do do it by myself, and so far I haven't spilled fuel everywhere. But, uh, yeah, turn the key on, let the pump kick on, and fill that bowl up. And then when it gets full, at the right moment, shut it off, and you got then you'll cinch the bowl back down. Uh, they'll put the lid on, and you're good to go. So I had done this. The truck's sitting there running. Actually, it probably ran for 15, 20 minutes just idling. You want to get those air bubbles out of there. Uh, because it's whenever you take off, those air bubbles trying to get through the injectors, uh, it's easy on them at idle. It's not so easy on them when the truck's under load. So I literally drove two blocks down the road and my pump had completely shut off. Uh, I had noticed a few days before that my pump, I could really hear my pump whining and uh, didn't sound awful. It didn't sound like there's a bearing bad or anything. It was just very uh, noticeable. And... Uh, Thought that was odd, but hey, now hindsight's 2020. I know what the problem was. Uh, something that would have saved me a lot of headache of diagnosing would have been a fuel pressure gauge. I have one underneath my hood. Um, I do know it's been sporadic, and I thought that the spring in it um, has just been going bad because I've replaced it like six times, and over a while, the uh, uh, gauges go bad. So. I didn't think that was the actual problem, and it you know that actually could have been an issue um, because it's not really it's bouncing a little bit, but nowhere near like it was. But the one thing it's keeping me from, I can't see fuel pressure under load. I can't see it while driving down at higher RPM. Um, having switching over to an electric pressure gauge that's underneath uh, or goes into the cab, so I can see it while driving, would have eliminated all these problems um, of me misdiagnosing and wondering what this is, that is going on um, and honestly anyone with a turbo diesel style motor these these days and the electronics and how 
tight these motors run with the electronics, it's probably a wise idea to do that. Um, I know it's one more thing you have to have underneath. I have a scan gauge too, uh, so I can monitor what parameters I can with it. That's all these CM uh, parameters, so there's no fuel pressure on it. There's no actual low pressure uh, oil. There, the oil switch on our trucks is just, it's either on or it's off. The switch goes, it turns it on that it's good to go at like 7 PSI, I believe. Uh, so that dummy gauge in our trucks, that kind of sucks. Uh, but then our ECM doesn't even have fuel pressure whatsoever. Um, so that kind of, you know, you don't get that either. You have to put a mechanical or electronic gauge in in order to monitor that. Uh, but just wanted to throw that in there. Um, that's my personal opinion. Uh, it like to know what anyone else thinks on that as far as, you know, it's a pain to put in, but do you think it's a good idea too? Uh, you know, down the road, you, you may never really need it, but when something does go wrong, you have something to monitor, an extra point to monitor. Uh, so I'll get you to the video, um, show you the old fuel pump. Um, I apologize for the lighting. Um, I've already been working on the editing and the lighting underneath the truck was horrible. Uh, so I apologize for that. You may have to crank up the brightness on your screen in order to really see what you're looking at. Uh, but it's raining outside right now, and so I'm not going to go out and try to redo the video real quick. So all of you have a good day. Thanks for watching, and here's the rest of the clip. Give you some instructions on hiring to replace this. It is super easy. Uh, now this is an aftermarket one, so your factory ones, sorry, uh, this is your drain that you need to do in the first place uh, periodically for getting the water out. Um, our filters in these have a water separator and the water goes into here, and this is your drain for that. Now I have an aftermarket one on this one, uh, and I'll probably take it off and put it on the new one, but I just wanted to get the new one on at the time. And there's a brand new filter inside this, which is really wonderful. But when I get ready to recycle this, I'm just going to take the filter out and take that bung off. Um, some people would possibly just rebuild rebuild one. I had thought about getting a new motor for this one. Uh, I'd get a new part for this because on all your new ones, I believe it's this part right here. This is the water sensor. Um, so you, your dash and your light would come on and tell you you have too much uh, water in here it needs to be drained. This is a heater, uh, would be a fuel bowl here, and they have deleted these on these trucks. They're not necessary. Uh, my truck's seen well, about 10 degrees so far, and I still haven't had a problem with the new one uh, freezing up or anything. And the new Ford wiring a lot of times will come with a new pump when you order it, and it, the wiring deletes this. Now you can just use your old wiring. Uh, and then tape off this because you do not want those terminals getting uh, somehow something getting in there and then touching and causing a problem. Uh, but if they come with a brand new harness that already deletes that, then makes it a little bit nicer, better under the hood or under the frame rail where this goes. One thing you will need is disconnect tools. Harbor Freight. Uh, I think this was a coupon. I want to say it's either $19.99, it may have been the $10.99, but uh, I think this was 20 bucks. Best damn things in the world. You're not getting those uh, fuel line connectors. You're not getting those off without these. Um, if you do, you're probably damaging them. You're going to destroy an O-ring in there or something. But greatest cheap tool. They don't have to be expensive. You do not need snap-on for this. And I'm a big snap-on guy for certain things, but... I got these, and dear lord, uh, just super quick. There's three bolts on the back side of this. Uh, you need two sizes to get these off. Uh, the top two are one size, and I can't remember which which one was. I think this is the quarter inch, and then this is the three eighths or five sixteenths. And this fives. That's the one I use. They don't have to be exact. Uh, you'll see it whenever you put them on how well. They fit it and slide in. So let's get underneath the truck. I'll show you how that works and how easy this actually was. So hopefully that is focusing. You can see the three bolts because I took the paint off. 
just three bolts. I think they're tens or they're twelves. And don't zip those off until you get everything disconnected underneath, but that's all it is. Three bolts. Now, you can get this out without taking the front dry shaft down. But I'll tell you, it's a heck of a lot easier. Just go ahead and pull the drive shaft on the front and just lean it over out of your way. Uh, I believe those are 8 mil. You just pop those out, you know. Probably have to use a uh, pry bar. Stick it in there so that way you can get the torque you need to get them off. The free spins, super easy. Just take the saddles off and watch your caps and let your caps come off and throw the needle bearings everywhere. That will get you screwed. But So you want to pull, there's three quick connects on the old one if you haven't had yours replaced before and updated. And on the new one, there'll just be two. One goes to the motor and then one goes to, uh, for the water. These are really super easy on using this tool. It's got a rubber band on it to hold it together. You split it open, slide it on with the male section going towards, if that's going to focus, and it'll go inside of this. And you push the tool into it, really, you know, wiggle it in, and then it will literally just, you know, you will feel it loosen and you can pop those off both ends. Now you do take your drain plug out and drain it first and that helps keep these hoses from having as much diesel in them to cover your face as you're sitting laying here. But pop the, so here's your order. Electrical wires first, drain it. Four fuel lines, three bolts on the back side. Throw the new one in. Reverse order fuel lines. Make sure you're or screw it onto the frame rail. Put your fuel lines back on. Make sure your drain's snug. And then put then you would have two with the new harness. It's about a foot long. New harness will plug into the main line and have the two for the water and then the motor. And make sure your cap is off underneath the hood on the filter. Prime it. This may take a little bit for the, everything to fill back up. Um, it's best to have someone in the cab and then someone under the hood to tell you to shut the key off. And then snug your fuel filter cap under the hood back down and um, let the vehicle sit there and run for a good 10 minutes. Try to get air bubbles out before you put it under load. Those air bubbles are really hard on the injectors. But that is about it. Super simple. If any questions, just give me a message. Like and subscribe. Thank you.